Good morning, everyone. This is take two of three rules to heal from chronic anything. I discussed this yesterday, but I had some more thoughts that I wanted to share with you. So chronic anything, chronic autoimmune issues, Lyme, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, chronic infections. If you're dealing with health problems that you just feel really stuck around, like you can't make progress, maybe you think you've tried everything, this is for you. We're going to be talking about mindset and spiritual shifts. That's the focus today. I am going to put one of my light therapy patches on while I'm waiting for some folks to join on. And this is not the topic of conversation for today, but I thought I would show putting it on because I've been wearing them right here in my videos and people have been having questions. So if you're interested to learn more about phototherapy patches, one of the biggest pieces on my own healing journey, uh, I'll put a link with the video uh, or it's in my Instagram link in bio. Wherever this video is, you'll be able to find a link. So the first rule of healing from chronic anything, I should give a disclaimer before I go further. My usual disclaimer is that this is not health advice. You shouldn't take health advice from people like me who have actually healed ourselves from chronic lots of things, including incurable diagnoses and who have liberated ourselves from the pharmaceutical industry. You should only take health advice from your pharmaceutically funded doctor. So just listen to your doctor's pharma funded opinion. Yeah. And uh, these statements have not been approved of by the FDA. Neither do I approve of the FDA, the Fraud and uh, Deception Administration, as I fondly call them. So first rule of how to heal from chronic anything, now that we've got that disclaimer out of the way. This is when you've tried everything, remember that you haven't. Okay, so this is where a lot of clients come to me. I get a lot of comments along these lines. People say, I have tried all the supplements. I've tried all the diets. I've tried all the types of fasting. I've gone to all the different functional medicine doctors or all the different energy work techniques. And I'm not making progress. That's what I hear a lot. Whether this is with, yeah, chronic autoimmune issues or uh, I used to really focus on food and weight issues in my practice so I would hear that a lot like I've tried everything to lose this weight or to get off the the yo-yo dieting uh, situation okay so here's the thing you may have tried everything pretty much everything within those realms of supplements or nutrition or certain technologies, okay? But that's all within one paradigm. You haven't actually tried an entirely different level of consciousness, an entirely new way of thinking and being. You can't heal in the environment in which you got sick, okay? So that means environment. It means the thoughts, the beliefs, the relationships, the values, the spiritual beliefs or the lack thereof, uh, the beliefs of victimhood, uh, where really that is the belief that anybody else needs to change in the world for us to be okay. That is the environment in which we got sick. We can't heal in that environment. So when you think you've tried everything, you have tried everything, you've tried all the crutches to feel okay without touching those major pillars of your environment, okay? So an example, I've worked with a handful of clients who struggle with chronic migraines and they say that they have tried everything by the time they get to me, but the common thread that I see intuitively and as I start to work with them is that chronic migraines correlate to a chronic belief that a person is uh, trapped by unfair circumstances. Somehow that belief is operating at a very deep governing level 
in their reality when they have chronic migraines. Uh, another word for this is victim mentality. Now that word's super triggering, so I didn't want to introduce it up front. Uh, but the, the reality is we have to look at those deep operative beliefs when we're struggling with chronic health conditions because this line, I've tried everything and it's not working, that's the lie of the ego because the ego doesn't actually want you to look at the big environmental changes, meaning those big belief, emotional relationship changes you can make, okay? So it's not to say when you're, when you're telling yourself this line, I have certainly said this line to myself in the past on my healing journey. It's not to say you're a bad or stupid person. That's just how healing works. And it's a really good thing when you get to the point in your journey where you're saying this, I've tried everything and it's not working because that's a breakthrough moment. That shows you, oh my goodness, I have a major paradigm to change. I have a major identity crisis to go through. I have a major existential crisis to go through and my life is never going to be the same on the other side of it, right? That's the moment we're facing, but healing is on the other side of that. One example in my life was I, so I grew up in an emotionally abusive home and that's been something I've processed a lot and gone through many layers of healing around. Uh, but there was one point in my life where I was dealing with chronic infections and they were bad and just really distressing and I had tried everything in the natural and holistic realm uh, in terms of supplements and protocols. Here's what shifted that and f basically fixed it overnight one could say. I left the relationship with the narcissist uh, in this situation and suddenly my body was like, that's exactly what I needed. Was, was that an easy change? That was one of the hardest decisions of my life, to leave a family relationship that I thought would be in my life forever. But that was my wise body actually calling my attention to the healing I needed to do in my environment. Thoughts, beliefs, relationships, values, spiritual perspectives. So. When you think you've tried everything you haven't, it's time to look bigger, okay? Rule number one. Rule number two is, hold on, let me make sure I'm in the right place in my notes. Okay, rule number two is to fall in love with responsibility. What is responsibility? It's the ability to change our circumstances and like I said, we can't heal in the same environment that made us sick. So if we're going to heal, we need a lot of ability to change our circumstances. We need to train ourselves to see how we are the only one who, uh, ones who need to change, right? The highest level of responsibility is understanding nobody else needs to change for you to be okay. Now, that's a tall order. That is a big radical shift in consciousness. That is nobody else in your family or your close relationships needs to change at all for you to be okay. The only one who needs to change is you. Uh, that could look like radical, just emotional and perception changes, your own behavior changes, leaving or taking distance from certain relationships, it also means nobody else in the world needs to change. Bill Gates doesn't need to change. You know, all these dark agents for dark agendas, they don't need to change. Your neighbors don't need to change their beliefs on guns and abortions and vaccines. They can keep their own beliefs and you're going to be okay. You actually are going to be better than okay. You have the ability to create your most beautiful, fulfilling world. That is the highest level of responsibility. That level of responsibility is required to heal from chronic anything, okay? Now, this can sound really good in theory, like, oh, yay, responsibility, we're not victims. How do we put that into practice? Um, 
there are, oh, I want to revisit, I want to revisit point one because I had two action steps to give you. So let me put a little pause uh, while we're in point two. I'm gonna hop back to point one and add this on. These are my notes to date. They're just like random papers. Um, but let me give you an action step for step one, which is when you think you've tried everything you haven't. Okay, so I talked through that. We're gonna talk about how do you see the bigger picture there? The first one, the first action step is you have the willingness to be wrong. You actually pray every morning you wake up and you pray to God, you pray to the divine and say, show me where I'm wrong. I am willing to see more truth. And this is a hard prayer. When you say it from your soul, you're literally asking to be humbled. You are asking for the most uncomfortable emotional experiences that a human being can go through. But those experiences are what's required to get to greater truth and healing. That's the first action step for rule number one. Pray to be shown where you're wrong. My motto in life has been, the best thing I've ever been was wrong. Action step number two is to look up German new medicine and the chronic condition you're dealing with. I am not an expert in German new medicine by any means, and it's not a medical paradigm. Uh, it's a beautiful spiritual and emotional philosophy, a perspective on health conditions, I would say. And Dr. Melissa Sell is somebody who is bringing this philosophy to the masses in a wonderful way. Like I said, I have only a top level overview of this paradigm, but it's been very helpful for me when I'm struggling with a, a health condition to look up the emotional roots and triggers of that or the belief triggers in this paradigm of German new medicine. So that's the second action step I would give you because that's going to give you information on what is the part of your environment, thoughts, beliefs, relationships, behaviors that you need to change, okay? Thank you for bearing with me as I put a pause in rule number two and hopped back. So now we're gonna go circle back. Rule number two, I was discussing falling in love with responsibility. What does that look like? Let's make it practical. So there are, um, I, I would say the complete opposite of self-responsibility is self-pity. Self-pity is pure psychic poison. But there is a dark urge in human nature to hold on to it at some degree. It is a weird, sick comfort blanket. It's actually a form of self-harm. And when we look at why do people self-harm, well, it's a strategy to find some kind of comfort, familiarity and control. It's a strategy to try to get some needs met in a really unhealthy way. And I would say the same is true for self-pity, that it is a form of self-harm people hold on to to provide mm, often validation for their excuses, to feel better in the fact that they're not growing uh, or making the changes they need to. Self-pity is thoughts like, this isn't fair, why is this happening to me? My life is so, so hard. It's not thoughts as much as it is a just an energetic, emotional quality. And I really think you can be attuned to what self-pity is if, when that comes up in your being. Uh, it's dark. It's dark. It is ego food. The ego loves it. Uh, but you can't heal when you're holding on to any thoughts of self-pity. So there's a point in my life I was going through a really, really challenging time. And I felt this temptation. It was like this dark pull in my mind towards the thought, this is so hard. Why is this happening to me? Why does it have to be so hard for me? Uh, why is this all on my shoulders? 
And it was in that moment, I heard my soul roar. It said, Lauren, you cannot afford a single bleeping second of self-pity if you are going to come out of this situation whole and healed. And I clearly remember that moment I made a vow to my soul that, okay, I will never again entertain a single thought of self-pity because I honor my soul because that's what I'm here to show up for, my soul, my divine calling to God, and I can't do that if I'm hosting thoughts of self-pity in my being. Uh, So that is a vow to make, and it's a a scary one because for people who are really entrenched in self-pity, that's really gonna change your mental atmosphere. But I encourage you uh, to have the courage to make that vow to yourself, to God, to your soul, It's going to change things. And the other, the other shift here, uh, when we're looking at falling in love with responsibility is to have curiosity in examining how your pain or your suffering is serving you in some light, uh, some way. There's a concept of wound power or my friend calls it weaponized incompetence where subconsciously we're choosing not to grow or not to heal because we're getting certain benefits particularly certain excuses uh, from the pain or the symptoms we're experiencing so somebody with chronic fatigue for example i intuitively see this across the board they are chronically tired of their lives because they have been uh, making decisions over the years that haven't been in alignment with their soul or their heart's desire. So they find themselves in a a life that doesn't bring them joy, that doesn't uh, make them excited to get out of bed and offer purpose to the world. Um, They don't have something on their horizon they're excited to grow towards. And so they are chronically tired. And what does that fatigue do for them? If we're looking at it from this perspective, that fatigue gives them an excuse not to engage in the life they aren't enjoying. What would be the healthier response? It would be to change one's life in really major and drastic ways so that it is no longer this heavy blanket over your soul um, so that you have a life you're excited to, to wake up and live every single day. That's a tall order and it's hard work and it takes a lot of small incremental changes every single day. Uh, sometimes it's just committing to five minutes of tapping emotional freedom technique every morning. Uh, but do you see what I'm saying? How there's actually a wound power in that you know instead of going through the hard work to actually radically change one's life that fatigue gives an excuse now you're not a bad person i'm not saying this you're not a bad person with these excuses Uh, i'm not shaming anyone this is human nature i've been there you know we're all there in ways that we don't see this is the growth process this is the spiritual growth process but if you want to heal okay If you want to heal, then you've got to examine these patterns in yourself and not with self-blame or self-recrimination, but simply with curiosity, just asking yourself, how is this serving me? And um, it, that's a really useful question with just have a gentleness of spirit and curiosity and look at the challenges, the pain, the chronic conditions you're dealing with and consider how is it allowing you to stay in a comfort zone? How is it allowing you to stay in a familiar place in your life? And what growth challenges might you face if those symptoms weren't present for you, okay? Your action step for, uh, sorry, my phone, I might have to plug it in in a second. So action step for number two, go to Beyond the Rule book 
www.thelaurelsmithcoachingcenter.com. This is my 30-day writing journey for a quantum leap in your life. And uh, this is a very unique, intuitive writing process. This is not like any other guided journal. It takes about 15 minutes a day to go through the day's lesson and then the accompanying exercise which is very structured, a very unique prompt every single day, and you're gonna use a timer for this process uh, to actually write in a way that gets you in touch with your intuition. That's a 30-day process that will change your life and give you a lot more insight and self-responsibility, okay? Let's move on to point number three. This is, you've gotta ruin your reputation. And I like to say, you have to ruin your reputation thoroughly and without hesitation. Why is this so important to a healing journey? Because your reputation is uh, how other people interpret you through their beliefs and their perceptions. And guess what? A lot of people have limiting beliefs. A lot of people have limited perceptions. and. Uh, they might be incapable of understanding your true self. So if you're going to step more into truth and love and healing, you are going to be deeply misunderstood and judged by people who aren't making that choice themselves. It's simply out of their realm of consciousness to be able to support your growth if they're not doing that for themselves. So you are going to have to go very crazy in their eyes and be totally judged and misunderstood. And it just helps to know that's simply part of the process. So first you start with uh, going crazy in the eyes of strangers, you know, people online, people in the grocery store. I honestly, people must think I'm crazy walking around with this. They don't know what this light therapy patch is. It looks like I have a plug in port on my chest. No, that's what it takes. And I remember a moment early in my healing journey, I was like 18. I had just dived into healing myself with nutrition and was learning about muscle testing. And it was like learning my mother tongue, like learning the language that created me. I was so excited to know my body knows what it needs to heal me and I can listen. So I was in the grocery, in a food co-op, health food store, muscle testing myself for different supplements. I was doing the sway test where you hold the bottle to your chest, you sway backwards or forwards based on if it's in alignment with your body. And I was getting the weirdest looks from strangers. And I just realized in that moment, oh, so this is what it takes to be healthy in this world. People are gonna think you are absolutely banana bonkers. And I was okay with it. In that moment, I, it was so clear to me, my priority was being healthy and happy and strong, not prioritizing how other people are interpreting me through their limiting beliefs, okay? So your action step here is to first go crazy in the eyes of strangers. It's, it's easier because then you have to go crazy in the eyes of the people who are closest to you in the environments that you have been in your whole life and are really enmeshed in. And for some people that might be your religious environment. You have to start looking like a heathen in the eyes of your religious community. Uh, been there, done that. Uh, also watched a couple friends leave the Mormon cult and that happened to them in a major way uh, because their community wasn't willing to question their limiting beliefs. So this is really true the more um, constrictive and controlling one's religious or spiritual environment is. Same with, I mean, people who grew up in atheistic or academic uh, environments, if you start developing spiritual connection in your life or have a spiritual awakening those people are gonna think you're really crazy and I, I watched one of my, my other friends go through this process she was uh, you know major powerhouse financial analyst very straight-laced person and she was super uncomfortable as she started venturing into holistic health because 
a lot of her community was thinking she was now totally woo-woo and uh, illogical and unscientific. It just, it's kind of funny when you think about it, but the people closest to you often are totally not going to understand your healing process. Uh, and that's okay. It's really hard and it does get easier. Uh, it's certainly hard when it is the people who are closest to you. Uh, but that's simply part of the process. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, honey. <laughs> and it is worth it on the other side. There's a line I remember. Um, it's when something about when you ruin your reputation, you can live with total freedom. And that's the truth. When you don't care about what other people think of you, you are free to be healthy. Okay? And that is what it takes to, to heal from chronic anything. So I hope this video gave you some food for thought. And uh, thank you for bearing with me as I uh, jumped back between point one and point number two. If you're watching the, the replay, I'm just going to upload this and it's a whole version. So thanks for bearing with me on that. Uh, like I said, this wasn't the topic of conversation today, but if you want to learn more about phototherapy patches, I will put a link with this video. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.